Hello everyone, I'm down to times 15 on Xbox Live. Back again for another video, and uh, this is gonna be from yesterday's video where I, yesterday, I watched WWE Backlash live! And from, it was live from Leon France, Holland Francais, and my god, the crowd was wild! absolute wild and I to be honest I loved every single minute of it and to be honest I think that the crowd may have been louder than the London crowd but we were loud but I feel like we they were louder and they, were, they had the better chance because they were in French and we couldn't understand some of them but I would love to know if you speak French and you know you saw that pay-per-view let me know in the comment section below what were uh, some of the chants saying i know that in the aj styles match they explained how that one of them was about being phenomenal but i have on my screen right now the brief you know mat all of the matches of who won who lost and i will go through you the a little through my head uh before i can remember what happened but yeah anyway let's start off we started off big 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 because it was the tag team match of RKO so Randy Orton and Kevin Owens taking on the bloodline and what was supposed to be a regular singles uh, regular tag team match but of course it didn't start off that way there was a brawl going on with Kevin Owens beating up Tamatanga Randy Orton beating up Solo Sokoa and there was it's just chaos the officials came in tried to break it off and of course Nick Aldis was like no 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 not on my watch restart the match but it's gonna be a no disqualification match this is gonna be a street fight bravo on Nick Aldis for making it a street fight and it was absolute chaos it was absolute carnage the first one to get a pinfall was to the mission was to win the match and my god there was trash cans there was tables there was chairs there was kitten sticks there was a the announced the French announced table there was even prime bottles being thrown about it was chaos now we get down to the end as Red as Solo Sokoa sets up Randy Orton to go through the table. He's about to hit that someone spike when he gets hit with an RKO out of nowhere, taking out them both, leaving uh, uh, Tama Tonga and Kevin Owens in the middle of the ring. There's a table set up in the middle of the ring. And Tama Tango's got Kevin Owens on the top turnbuckle, and he's gonna, he's, you know, climbing and top and that top turnbuckle, and he is maybe new to WWE, but he surely knows Kevin Owens by now. You never try and suplex Kevin Owens because Kevin Owens will always reverse it into a, a suplex of his own, like a Canadian suplex of his own through the table. That was it. Boom, done. One, two, pulled out the ring. Tangaloa. Tangaloa rejoined his brother and he is now joining the bloodline as he beat up Kevin Owens. He beat up Kevin Owens, whacking him in the head with a steel steps. It's all of taking out Randy Orton. Then once some solo, spinning solo later onto some chairs actually not tables on the on toilet chair and there's a Samoan spike later boom bang one two three and the winners are the blood line then of course going on from there we're going through the triple threat match for the women's championship as Bailey defends her women's championship against Tiffany Stratton and Naomi Admittedly, I didn't pay much attention to this match. It was because I was eating my dinner at the time and I had to look down, look down, look up. There wasn't much to go on, to be honest. But the end of the match was pretty good because we, I, for what I saw, I saw Tiffany Stratton try and go for the prettiest moves still ever, and they both moved out the way, and 
in the end, Naomi went for like a small package on to Bailey, but Bailey reversed that. One, two, three, retained the title. Congratulations to Bailey in retaining the championship. And going from one championship to another as the world heavyweight champion Damian Pri Damian Priest. Um, <clears throat> three, two, one, take, take two. <clears throat> as the world heavyweight champion Damian Priest goes one on one with. Mr. Usi himself, Mr. Yeetamania, Jay Uso, main event Jay Uso, then going one on one with Damian Priest, and that was a really good battle. I would admit, I, the, of course, I was right. There were shenanigans, but Damian Priest said he didn't want the the Judgment Day helping him out in his matches, but they did anyway as JD McDonough almost cost him the match but after hitting after Jay Uso hitting a big Uso splash into the corner you know Uso splash near the corner hitting the Damian Priest one two but there is the damn JD McDonough putting the bottom uh, his leg on the bottom rope and of course Jay Uso had enough of the judgment day as Finn Balor was there too trying to help him out he takes out JD McDonough with a flying Uso suicide dive. Takes out and he put he spears uh, Finn Balor out of his boots. And this is when he's about to get back in the ring, but then he gets caught with uh, I think they have to finish off the match. He gets caught by Damian Priest. And he tells it to rise, rise about three goddamn four hundred times, and finally, one south of heavens laid out off the top rope. I might add, avalanche style. One, two, three. Still the world heavyweight champion, Damian Priest. Of course, after the match, the adjustments they start beating down Jey Uso, but Damian Priest is like, no, no, stop it. Stop it! He's done! He's done! You don't have to worry about this! And even and so there's some communications that needs to be done there when it comes to the Judgment Day. We'll see what happens on Monday Night Raw. Well, speaking of tag team champions, speaking of champions, we're gonna go on to the next match as it was the tag team champions, the K women's tag team champions, the Kabuki Warriors, that defended their titles against Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. Again, I thought there might have been some miscommunication. There was throughout the match, it wasn't really that ex exciting. So I'll just skip to the end where. Bianca Belair and Ch uh, Jade Cargill are now the new women's tag team champions. Wasn't that exciting? There was a lot of mistakes happening, like who was the legal people in, and I don't know. There was just too much going on at once. But what was a phenomenal match was AJ Styles. Going up against the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. As Cody Rhodes defends his WWE Championship against AJ Styles. And that was a hell of a bang of a match. Close calls after close calls. Even the table was involved, I believe. As it was just too perfect. The, the way that it should, we went and uh, was expecting. There was. Disaster kicks, Cody Connors, style clash attempts, phenomenal forearms, getting count his phenomenal forearm, and then he counted into a super kick into the stern. And it was what to expect between two Georgia boys. That was a great match. Loved every single win minute, uh, minute of it. One Cody Connor and a crossroads later. One, two, three, still WWE Champion uh, Cody Rhodes. Again, two thumbs up from me. Four and uh, maybe three stars, maybe, because there was a lot of mm, bits that could have gone longer. The crowd was awesome. I'll give the crowd that. Yesterday, when I watched it, it was phenomenal. It was great. I think there should have been at least a couple more matches. 
but hey, it's backlash. It's not a, not really. There's stories being told throughout to build up throughout the year. The, the new member of the bloodline. Who's in controlling the bloodline now? Who's the new tribal chief? It certainly isn't Roman Reigns. Paul Heyman, where does he stand in all this? With the women's championship, who's going to face Bailey in the future? Who's gonna? What's going to happen with the Judgment Day now that Damian Priest is saying back off in my matches? Bianca Belair and Shade Cargill are the new tag team champions. Can they keep the titles? Can they coexist? Because those are two big egos right there. That's all I have to say about that. And we all know that we all love Cody. Even though a majority of the crowds uh, nowadays want Roman Reigns back. I personally don't. Cody, you need to be the champion that we all deserve. But what's going to happen is the next pay-per-view, I believe, is crown the crown jewel thing with the king's crown jewel thing. Uh, where we're going to have the king of the ring tournament and queen of the ring uh, the queen, the queen of the ring tournament, as well, happen there. The finals of that will have the semi-finals and finals happen there, I believe. We've got some matches lined up for that. And the one, one of the matches that I'm looking forward to is the former King of the Ring winner, Sheamus. It's going to be facing Gunther on Monday Night Raw, and there's it's going to be good. It's going to, I'm going to cannot wait to make my predictions for that. But until, uh, until my, those predictions. I'm down in 2015 on Xbox Live, and I'd like to say until next time, bye bye. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to subscribe. If you want to watch the previous video, then click on the video on the left. But if you want to watch the playlist, then click on the playlist that's on the right.